The last couple of days have been huge for OpenAI. They're not just improving ChatGPT anymore, they're quietly building something much bigger. And when you start connecting the dots, new acquisitions, billion dollar deals, executive shuffles, safety controversies, and even small feature rollouts, it's clear they're trying to position themselves far beyond just the chatbot company. Let's start with the moves that really set this all in motion. OpenAI just announced not one, but two major acquisitions. The first one is Alex, which if you're an iOS developer, you've probably heard of. Alex Codes has been one of the most loved AI assistants for Apple's Xcode. And here's the funny part. Apple itself owns Xcode, but developers have long complained that Apple hasn't exactly nailed the user experience. So Alex Codes basically became the go-to cloud-based tool to make iOS development less painful. OpenAI is pulling Alex into its Codex division with the goal of building what they're calling Cursor for Xcode. Codex, if you haven't kept track, is the backbone of OpenAI's coding products. It's already available inside Visual Studio Code. It works in the cloud and the CLI is getting rave reviews online. So adding Alex into the mix is a way to make Codex much stronger in Apple's developer world. Existing Alex customers will keep getting support for now, but no new downloads after October 1st. That's a clear sign they're folding the product into something bigger, not keeping it alive as a standalone. Now the real shift comes with the second move because it points to something bigger than ChatGPT. OpenAI is spending around $1.1 billion, all stock, to acquire StatSig, a product analytics and A-B testing company. If you work in experimentation or growth, you know StatSig, its tools, help teams run feature flagging, real-time decisioning, and data-driven product experiments. But here's the thing, they didn't just buy the product. They also brought over the founder and CEO Vijay Raji, who's stepping in as OpenAI's brand new CTO of applications, He's reporting directly to Fiji Semo, the former Instacart CEO who just joined as OpenAI's CEO of applications a couple weeks ago. So this is obviously not some random restructuring. OpenAI is literally creating a new applications division with consumer apps like ChatGPT and Codex on one side and business-focused tools on the other. Raji will lead the consumer side, while Srinivas Narayanan, who previously headed engineering and oversaw the development of ChatGPT and developer APIs, is becoming CTO of B2B applications. That means startups, enterprises, and even government deals are now his direct focus. He'll report to COO Brad Lightcap, while Raji reports to CMO. Meanwhile, Kevin Wheel, who was chief product officer, is moving into research. He's now VP of AI for science, spinning up a brand new team that focuses on medical and bioscience applications. If that reminds you of DeepMind's AlphaFold project, you're not wrong. OpenAI clearly wants its own AI for science track. Wield will be working closely with Mark Chen, the chief research officer. The timing of all this is no coincidence. By pulling in Alex codes and StatSig at the same time, OpenAI is signaling that applications, both consumer and enterprise, are now just as important as the underlying research. ChatGPT isn't the end game, it's just the entry point. And the money behind this strategy? That's where it gets even bigger. CNBC just reported that OpenAI is expanding its secondary share sale from $6 billion to $10.3 billion. That's employees and former employees cashing out their stock to investors like SoftBank, Dragoneer, Thrive Capital, Abu Dhabi's MGX, and T. Rowe Price. The valuation on this deal? $500 billion, half a trillion. Earlier this year, they were valued at $300 billion. So in just a few months, the number has shot up dramatically. To put that in perspective, this is one of the largest private valuations in tech history. Employees who have held their shares for more than two years can now sell them, with the transaction closing in October. It's the kind of move companies like SpaceX, Stripe, and Databricks have also done, letting staff cash in without going public. But the scale here shows how much investor demand there is. If ChatGPT was just a chatbot, no way you'd see a half trillion valuation. Clearly, the market believes OpenAI is about to roll out something much bigger. So you're hearing about this AI opportunity that could build incredible wealth, but you're probably thinking, how do I actually seize it and turn it into real money? 
Here's what I can tell you. The method I discovered, the one that's generated over $500,000 in the past 12 months is called Faceless Empire. It's the complete system for building automated income streams that work while you sleep. No need to show your face on video, no complicated tools, just AI doing the heavy lifting. But here's the thing, I'm only sharing this for a few days with 200 founding members. If you're someone who likes to seize opportunities instead of watching from the sidelines, click the link in the description to be the first to know once we reveal everything. Sign up for free right now to be notified when we reveal the whole system. Yet with all the hype, OpenAI can't escape the backlash. There's been serious controversy around ChatGPT's role in sensitive situations. A California family is suing OpenAI for wrongful death after their 16-year-old son, Adam Rain, died by suicide. They claim ChatGPT validated his most harmful thoughts instead of steering him toward help. The family even included chat logs in the lawsuit, showing him sharing suicidal thoughts with the bot. Their lawyer, Jay Edelson, accused OpenAI of negligence and called for the product to be taken down. In response, OpenAI is now rushing to add parental controls and new safety features. They're planning to link teen accounts to parent accounts, give parents the ability to disable memory and chat history, and even send notifications if the system detects acute distress. They've said expert input from mental health and youth development specialists will shape this, but Edelson called it nothing more than crisis management and this lawsuit wasn't the only case that raised alarms. The Wall Street Journal recently reported about a man named Stein Eric Solberg who used ChatGPT to feed his paranoia until it escalated into him killing his mother and then himself. OpenAI says they'll start redirecting some sensitive conversations to what they call reasoning models like GPT-5 thinking, which they claim are more resilient against hostile or dangerous prompts. The idea is that if a user is in distress, the system can automatically switch to a safer, more thoughtful model, regardless of which one they originally picked. This is part of a bigger push across tech. Meta just said its chatbots will be blocked from discussing topics like suicide and eating disorders with teens after leaked documents suggested otherwise. The UK's Online Safety Act is also forcing platforms like Reddit and X to add age verification. For OpenAI, these changes are not optional anymore. They're under the microscope. So you've got this tension. On one side, OpenAI is building out a massive applications team, pulling in billion dollar acquisitions and expanding into enterprise and science. On the other, they're scrambling to make ChatGPT safer after tragic incidents. Both sides are tied to the same bigger picture. If they want to own the application layer of AI, they need scale and safety to coexist. But let's not overlook the smaller moves. They reveal a lot about how OpenAI thinks. Just this week, they announced that Projects, a feature that was once exclusive to paid ChatGPT users, is now available to everyone for free. Projects basically act like folders for your chats, but they're more than that. You can set custom instructions for how the AI responds, limit what files it can access, and even upload reference material. Free users can now add up to five files per project, plus subscribers get 25 and pro subscribers get 40. You can also customize the project's color and icon. On the surface, this looks like a nice perk for free users, but it's also a clever growth strategy. OpenAI has done this before. Deep Research and ChatGPT Voice both started as paid features, then trickled down with tighter limits. Even GPT-5 launched for everyone, but free users had harsher usage caps. It's a way to give people a taste of premium while nudging them toward paying. And notice the timing again. They're handing out more free features while building a stronger applications org and raising money at a 500 billion valuation. It's like they're balancing user growth, product depth, and investor hype all at once. If you zoom out, what you see is OpenAI constructing a two-pronged empire. On one side, you've got the consumer apps, ChatGPT, Codex, Alex integration, projects, all the stuff everyday users touch. On the other, you've got enterprise and science statsigs, experimentation tools, B2B applications under Neuranian, and Wheels AI for Science team. And hovering above it all is Fiji Simo, running the entire applications org like a tech CEO within the company. Eventually, OpenAI is now positioned in a way that could directly challenge Microsoft, their biggest partner and investor. 
Microsoft's bread and butter has always been enterprise applications. If OpenAI is now building a dedicated B2B applications division staffed with a billion dollar acquisition and led by top talent, it's fair to ask how long this partnership stays purely cooperative. Satya Nadella and Sam Altman may be all smiles today, but competition in enterprise AI is inevitable. So there it is, some will become millionaires because of AI, some will stay exactly where they are, and some will unfortunately lose their jobs. Which one will you be? Faceless Empire gives you the exact method that's generated over $500,000 for us over the last 12 months. But only 200 people will get a chance to get our system when I reveal everything in a few days. Don't be the person who had the chance to seize this AI opportunity and didn't take it. Sign up for free priority access now. The link's below, but not for long. All right, that's all the updates for now. Let me know what you think about OpenAI's direction. Are they getting too big too fast or is this the natural next step? Drop a comment, hit the like button if you found this useful, and of course, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.